Okay, so last part is to talk about the ideal gas law. So here's a chart that kind of combines all the laws that we've talked about so far and what things are constant. Now this K and this B and this A are just constants. They're part of the equation. But you can just look at the relationship between those variables. We can combine these three laws into this equation here. So V equals R times T times N over P. R is considered what's called the universal gas constant. So it's a constant. It's a set value. Um, for our purposes right now, R is going to represent 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Okay, so we've got pressure, or sorry, pressure unit, volume, number of moles, and our temperature. We can rearrange this to get what's called the ideal gas law, and that is PV equals NRT. So that's really the one that you're going to want to know for sure. Okay. So the ideal gas law is the equation of state for a gas. It's the state of a gas um, is its condition at a given time. So it gives information about the gas's condition. In order to solve the ideal gas law, we have to know at least three of the properties. So there are four variables present in the ideal gas law, pressure, volume, temperature, number of moles. We need to know three of them in order to define the state of the gas because then we can solve for the fourth one. An ideal gas is actually a hypothetical substance. It doesn't actually exist. We say that some gases can have ideal gas properties, um, but some also don't. And so what you would do in a problem is assume ideal gas status unless you're told otherwise. So you can use this equation in mo most instances. So let's take a look at an example for the ideal gas law. So a sample of hydrogen gas has a volume of 8.56 liters at a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 1.5 atmospheres. And we want to calculate the number of moles. Well, we have no different conditions, you know, no V1, V2. I just want to find the number of moles. So I'm going to use the ideal gas law, so PV equals NRT. If I'm solving for number of moles, I'm going to rearrange, so PV over RT. The only thing I do need to convert is my temperature. I need to convert it to Kelvin. Uh, if I add 273, that just gives me 273 Kelvin. Based on my R value of 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, uh, looks like all of my units are okay, and so I don't need to convert anything else. But if, for example, my pressure was in Tor, I would need to convert that. So now let's plug in. So we've got 1.5 atmospheres times my volume, which is 8.56 liters, divided by my R value, which is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and then my temperature is 273 Kelvin. Okay, and I've already calculated that out for you. If I plug all that in, that gives me 0 0.57 moles of H2. And two significant figures looks okay to me with my pressure here. Honestly, we should never just write it as zero. My guess is it would at least be 0, 0.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we've talked about Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Avogadro's Law, and now the Ideal Gas Law. And that's a lot of stuff to memorize. But really, if you just know the Ideal Gas Law, you can actually find all of the other laws from that. And so we're going to look at a few of those. We're not going to solve them. We're just going to look at how to set them up. Okay, so we have a volume of 7 milliliters. Now, right away, you would probably need to convert that to liters unless all your other volumes are in the same unit. So keep that in mind. We've got a pressure of 1.68 atmospheres. The gas is compressed to a volume of 2.7 milliliters, so that's our V2. Now, because they are the same unit, I don't need to convert unless I'm asked to specifically. It says temperature is constant. And use the ideal gas law to calculate the final pressure, so we're looking for P2. Now, we don't know the temperature or the moles, so using just the ideal gas law is going to be a little difficult, but let's take a look. R is a constant, so I know it's not going to change from initial conditions to final conditions. So I'm going to cancel it out. We also said that temperature was constant, and I'm going to assume that the number of moles is constant also. So this just leaves me with P times V. Well, this gives me the relationship P1V1 equals P2V2. Now this should look a little familiar, considering that this is Boyle's Law. Okay, so I'm using the ideal gas law, canceling out the things that are constant, and that leaves me with the relationship between pressure and volume. Okay, so you can use the ideal gas law to calculate or to come up with the other laws. 
Hey, then we would just plug this in to solve for P2. Okay, let's look at another one. So we have a sample of methane gas that has a volume of 3.8 liters. Um, its temperature is 5 degrees Celsius, and it's heated to 86 degrees Celsius, so that's our T2. And this will be our T1. And its pressure is constant, so P1 equals P2. And we want to find our new volume, which is our V2. So if we look at the ideal gas law, again, R will cancel. I'm going to cancel moles, and in this case, pressure is constant. So I'm left with V equals T. Well, that turns into the relationship V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And this is Charles' law. I would need to convert my temperature to Kelvin, um, but my liters are okay for volume, and then I would just plug in and solve for V2. Let's take a look at another one. So we have a sample of diborane gas has a pressure of 345 torr at a temperature of negative 15 degrees Celsius and a volume of 3.48 liters. If conditions are changed, okay, so now we've got a final condition. So now the new temperature is 36 degrees Celsius and the new pressure is 468 torr, then we want to know the new volume. Okay, well we can use the ideal gas law to find the relationship between these three variables. So PV equals nRT. R is constant, N is constant in this case, so we get P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And then I would rearrange to solve for V2. I would need to convert my temperatures to Kelvin by adding 273, but otherwise everything else is okay to stay as it is. If we were using R, so if we were using the whole ideal gas law, we would need to convert our pressures to atmospheres because the unit in our gas constant is atmospheres. But because we canceled R out and both of our pressure units are the same, we don't need to convert them in this case. Okay, let's look at one more example. So we've got a sample containing 0.35 moles of argon gas. And its temperature is 13 Celsius. And we have a pressure of 568 torr. We're going to heat that to 56 Celsius. So now we're changing our temperature. And we're also changing our pressure. And we want to calculate the change in volume. Well, change in volume is V2 minus V1. So I need the volume at the final conditions, and I need the volume at the initial conditions. Now, because it didn't say anything about the moles, I'm going to assume that they're constant. So we're going to have to do two calculations here. So P1 V1 equals NRT. And then do the same for V2. Now you could put these two together, cancel out your R, solve for the quantity V2 minus V1, and get your change that way. So if you want to do it that way, that would work too. Um, either way, really. Okay, so here I'm going to solve for V1. So NRT over P. I'm just going to keep in mind that those are all my initials. So 0.35 moles times 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres over mole Kelvin. Now, I write all my units all the time, so I don't make a mistake. Okay, sometimes writing things out is not such a bad thing. Let's convert our temperature by add 273. That gives me 286 Kelvin. And for T2, that gives me 329 Kelvin. So this is T1, which is 286 Kelvin. And then, let's see, divide by my pressure. My P1 is 568 torr. Now, that's not going to work either because I am in atmospheres. So in order to convert torr, 568 torr, if you remember, there's 760 torr per atmosphere. Okay, and I've already done this one, and it's 0.747 atmospheres. While we're here, we might as well do P2 so we don't forget. And if we do the same conversion, we get 1.18 atmospheres. So 0 0.747 atmospheres on the bottom. If I calculate all of that to get V1, that's going to give me 10.996 liters. If I do the same idea, only solving for V2, so I'm using the same N because N is constant, I'm using the same R because R is constant, I'm using my T2 and I'm using my P2 of 1.18 atmospheres, that gives me a V2 of 8.008 liters. Now remember, we said change was V2 minus V1. So change in volume is 8.008 liters minus 
10.996 liters, that's going to give me approximately, with rounding and significant figures, negative 0 0.30 liters. So what this means is that the volume decreased. Okay, so we went from a volume of almost 11 liters to a volume of 8 liters. So when you want the change, if it's negative, that just means the volume decreased.